Hi everyone, I'm Yasha, and welcome to the 32nd episode of Election Scoop. And today we'll be looking at the next four states on our list of midterm predictions. Illinois, Idaho, Indiana, and Iowa. Not in that order. Well, it might be in that order. Alright, let's just dive in. First up is the Illinois governor, where the incumbent Republican, Bruce Rahner, is facing up against Democratic businessman J.B. Pritzker. Now, even though the Republican is the incumbent, he is severely lacking in the polls. He's a ton of points behind, and so we can rate this race as likely D. He can theoretically make it competitive, but it's, we're almost certain that the Democratic candidate is going to take it as Illinois becomes even more blue. His election, uh, the Republican's election in 2014, against a weak Democratic appoint, uh, nominee was more of an anomaly than anything. For the Illinois House of Representatives, same thing. Most districts are held by Democrats. There are a couple districts that are toss-ups, both held by Republicans, that might switch, the 6th and the 12th. And then there are a couple of districts, the 13th and the 14th, that may have a possibility of being competitive. But most likely, it'll be just no gain or one to two for the Democrats, but they could pick up three to four. Next up is Idaho, certainly a much more conservative state than Illinois, one of the most conservative in the Union. Democrat Paulette Jordan is facing off against Lieutenant Governor Brad Little. Obviously, this is Idaho, and Little has a substantial lead in the polls, but if you'll notice, there are a lot of undecideds. I mean, I'm doing the math now. Uh, 39 plus 29 is what? 60, excuse me, 58. Or no, sorry, 68. Yes, yeah, 68. So that's a ton, like almost a third of voters in this race are undecided. So, you know, it's not as safe as you think. And the Democrat is not that far behind the Republican. So we do rate this as safe far. There's really not much of a path to a Democratic victory. But we're going to see some interesting gains by Democrats in this race. There's not much to discuss for the Idaho House. Two districts. It's interesting. One of these districts, one of these districts was actually held by a Democrat until 2010. But now it's safe Republican. So we don't need to worry about that. Indiana. One of the most competitive states this cycle as every cycle. Incumbent Democratic Senator Joe Donnelly is fighting against uh, Mike Braun in order to see who will become Indiana's next senator. Now, Donnelly has a small lead in the polls, 46% to Braun's 42%, but this is an extremely close race. Uh, President Trump, w Trump won the state by a not insignificant margin. And this race is definitely a toss-up. It is a key race that will determine who controls the Senate come uh, next Congress, the 116th Congress, it will be. For the House, things are more or less cut and dry. There's a couple of districts, the 2nd and the 9th, that are Republican-held that might change hands, but they're probably not. So Democrats could pick up a seat or two, but most likely will just stay at 7 Republicans, 2 Democrats. The last state is Iowa, the classic, well, maybe Florida is the classic swing state. Iowa is, I guess you could say, the bellwether, meaning it's a, known as an indication of how the country's feeling. And that's definitely, uh, that's definitely a factor in this race. The incumbent Republican governor, Kim Reynolds, uh, she was lieutenant governor, and then she took go the office of governor when Terry Branstad, who is the former governor of Iowa, uh, who actually the longest serving governor of any state in history, uh, resigned to take ambassadorship to China. And she's facing off against Fred Hubble. Hubble, interestingly, holds a small four point lead in the polls, 40 for him to 36 for her. But of course, uh, swing state, swing race, pretty obvious that it's a toss up. Uh, this would be a pretty significant gain for Democrats. Um, since they have slid into a minority in both houses of the Iowa legislature recently. 
So they could really use a good turnaround here. And last but not least, the Iowa House. Now, this is interesting. Iowa is a fairly small state. It only has four districts. Currently, districts 1, 3, and 4 are held by Republicans. District 2 is held by the Democrats. So worst case scenario for the Democrats, they keep District 2, that's safe, and they lose the other three. But most likely, they'll pick up one seat, the first district, which is held now by a Republican, but is very close to switching sides, and they might be able to pick up the third district, which is a toss-up, and maybe the fourth district, which is a uh, likely Republican. So most likely, they'll gain the first and maybe the third district, and they could potentially gain the fourth district as well, which interestingly would give them control of all four seats uh, to the of Iowa to the House of Representatives, but that's probably not going to happen. Anyway, those are the four states that we discussed today. A mixed bag, some competitive races, some not competitive races, and that's really what United States elections are all about. So thanks for watching, and remember, don't forget to vote.